Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerholt, Managing Editor of the Register, and my guest today is George Keller, a lifelong resident of Bellevue and a survivor of clergy abuse uh, from the Catholic Church. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. That story is in the headlines right now. And Mr. Keller wanted to share his story and what he thinks is going on right now. It's, we're going to talk with him in just a moment, but before we go there, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. If you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. All of our segments of Between the Lines are available at SanduskyRegister.com slash BTL. Uh, so you can go back on-demand viewing for all of our programming. And Between the Lines has been uh, at SanduskyRegister.com since about 2008. So there's a lot to look at there. Erin McLaughlin's with us today. Erin, do you want to say hello? Hello. Erin's producing this segment of Between the Lines. And with that, I'll introduce George Keller. Mr. Keller, thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Matt, for having me. Um, you know, the the report of the grand jury, the grand jury report out of Pennsylvania. Yes. Uh, was released in August. Yes. I think before all, about August 18th or thereabouts. And it was devastating. Yes. Um, more than a thousand victims were identified and the suggestion that there are thousands of other victims. I, I can believe that. Across Pennsylvania. Yes and a pattern of abuse and a pattern of protecting a pedophile priests. Yes. And you have a story of your own of what happened to you in, at Immaculate Conception School, grade yes. school. Yeah. You were a student there uh, from first to eighth grade? Yes. First so you did graduate from... I graduated in 1961. Yeah. 1961. And you met Father Leo Welch. Yes. Yes. And... Um, Father Leo Welch, I, I believe, had served here in Sandusky, at Sandusky St. Mary's. Yes. And then he went to Bellevue, to Immaculate Conception. Yes. And from there he went to a parish in Toledo. But he left Immaculate Conception because you called him out. Yes, I... Um, uh, in 19... In, in, the, in the late um, uh, 50s. Um, right. And... Uh, when he I, left. Actually. When he left. Yeah. Basically, the reason he left was that um, as I went to Father Bishop, who was the pastor at that time, and um, it took quite a bit of nerve for, for a me. 15 year old. For, for me, as a seventh, eighth grader, right. um, to go to um, the pastor and um, look, I. I there's something wrong here. Right. There's something wrong. Right. And myself and another uh, boy um, who um, we had discussed this on the playground, and I said, well, um, I'm, I'm going to go to Father Bishop with it. Mm -hmm. And and so um, I did. And I guess you had to know me back then. Uh, I wasn't exactly the football player guy. I, I was timid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll admit to that. I was timid, but I had, something was wrong. Something was very wrong, and there was only one way to, um, to stop it, mm -hmm. and that was to go to the source. Mm -hmm. and, the pastor. Uh, and that was the pastor. Mm -hmm. You know, report it to him um, and see what he had to say. Well, about the time I'm going in the back door, and the housekeeper at the time is um, setting me down at the uh, at the dining room table, um, and I'm starting my conversation with Father Bishop. Um, another woman practically breaks down um, the front door, and she is the mother of the other kid that I had talked to on the plane. And you had told the kid. And I had told the Tell kid. your parents. And this yeah. was after your abuse had ceased. Right, right. I had, uh, I was no longer going to the cottage. And, uh, but um, it was, um, now it was just a, a new group of boys. Right. 
And, and, and you have to remember, I mean, he had this cottage up in the Bono area, had a boat, there was water skiing. I mean, it was, uh, it was every kid's dream. An endless summer camp. Yeah, endless summer camp. Right, yeah. right. Uh, Mr. Keller's story is in uh, tomorrow's Weekender Register. Uh, and just to put it, give it some context, you were 12 years old when you first encountered uh, Father Welch. And, and he had taken you and another boy or other boys? Oh, other boys. Other boys. Uh, other boys. And um, I, at the time, um, there were numerous times after my initial going to Father Bishop, there were other times when I would call, um, for instance, to just the parish. Um, never the Toledo Diocese, but just mm -hmm. the parish. And I got this story and, and um, it would be ignored. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, when Boston broke in 2002, uh, when that broke, it was like um, to me, it was uh, take advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, now is the time. Um, if you're ever going to be heard, now is when you're going to be heard because it's become a national story. Mm -hmm. Now it is no longer just a local story. It's a national story, and um, if you don't take advantage of this situation, what was your opportunity? the opportunity knocked, and it sometimes doesn't knock twice. And that was the Boston Globe, uh, a staff at the Boston Globe began examining records and were able to show priest abuse, uh, repeated uh, priest abuse, great numbers of priests, great numbers of victims, and they broke that story in 2002. A 2015 movie, Spotlight, details the, yeah. uh, the news reporting that was done. And, and it's a shame that um, after 2002, and coincidentally, they have a bishop's conference, and they come out with a letter um, uh, condemning the abuse, what they're going to do about the abuse as the church, and so on and so forth, um, that here we are in 2018, 16, 16 years, years later, and we talk about it again. Mm -hmm. um, what part of cease and desist don't you get? Um, you know, locally, um, there, there, there's a church that's opening up um, a fourth satellite church. It's not that people don't want to go somewhere today and bend me and praise Jesus Christ. As the Catholic Church is closing churches, um, closing Catholic schools. Um, for instance, last year, the First Communion class at Immaculate Conception Church in Bellevue was 24 kids. 24 children. About half of what it was when oh, you were in second probably year? less than a third. Right. What does that say about the church 24 years from now? What does that say? What, you know, what, what don't they see that they're doing to this church? They're, they're driving it out of existence. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a tragedy. It's just a, a, a real tragedy as a lifelong Catholic. I have friends that ask me, why are you still a practicing Catholic? I don't pray to the Pope. I don't pray to the Cardinal. I don't pray to the Bishop. I have a local priest who is my absolute rock. Um, I pray to Jesus Christ. That's who I pray to. That's why I go to the Catholic Church. And you remain a Catholic and, and devout remain, Catholic to this day. I'm, my wife and I are part of the Eucharistic ministry mm -hmm. in our church. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there are occasions when on Sunday um, I'm standing before people with the body of Christ and I look them in the eyes and I go, the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. It's about Christ. I am going to stick with my Catholic Church, but I am not someone who, I want it to change. I want it to change. And, and you've asked for 
a meeting with Bishop Daniel Thomas? I have asked for a meeting with, with Bishop Thomas. I have met with the last two bishops. Mm -hmm. I met with Bishop Hoffman when I broke the story in 2002. Um, I forget the name of the other, the last bishop, but I have now asked for a meeting with Bishop Thomas. And his letter of August the 20th of this year. This is his letter to the faithful. His letter to the faithful. In the second paragraph. Now let me just, just set this up. This was a letter that Bishop Daniel Thomas wrote to parishioners across the Toledo Diocese. Across the Toledo Diocese. Uh, in response to the release of the grand jury report and the, re the release of a report about Father McCarran, Theodore McCarran, or Cardinal. Theodore, right, Cardinal at the time. Theodore uh, McCarran, McCarrick, uh, in June. Yeah. So it was June for McCarrick, which found that he had had a pattern of abuse yes. um, that was previously undisclosed. And then the Pennsylvania report in August, which showed a massive pattern of abuse. Yes. Um, and the letter to the faithful uh, that, that Daniel Bishop, Bishop Daniel Thomas wrote, yes. August 20th to parishioners, is what you're talking about. Right. And you take exception with some of what the bishop said in that letter. I, I find it ironic that here is uh, a bishop who was born and raised in Pennsylvania, educated in Pennsylvania in Catholic school, went to seminary in Catholic, at a Catholic seminary in Pennsylvania, served as a pastor in a couple of churches in Pennsylvania, then served as assistant bishop in one of the largest dioceses in Pennsylvania, the, um, the uh, Philadelphia right. um, diocese. And when the grand jury report surfaced, um, he he didn't come right out and say he didn't come right out and deny, but his words of he carefully worded, um, I was shocked and I was shamed and I was angry. When, when I, he learned, yeah, when he learned of the abuse. Well, if if if. You've been ordained, you've served in Catholic churches, you've been the bishop of one of the largest dioceses in Pennsylvania, and you just found out about it? Yeah, how, how could you not have how seen How could this? you not have known something? So my issue, really, right now with Bishop Thomas is not so much the, uh, the sexual abuse, it's the lie. Right. It's the lie, and the reason this has been able to continue for decades and decades and decades is because of the lie. Because of the lie. You know, the, the, the matter of fact, um, the, the Cardinal uh, McCarrick, I believe I pronounce his name. McCarrick. He was um, one of his victims. Um, it was um, proven that he was a victim. Mm -hmm. There were witnesses. The allegations were substantiated. Yes, and yet um, Bishop Thomas was part of a review board that um, said, oh no, that, that, that's not true. So they denied it. Later on, that victim committed suicide. Mm -hmm. I would not want to have that blood on my hands. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the pattern. It's the pattern of Joe Paterno mm -hmm. at Penn State. Joe it's, Paterno who turned uh, away from what Jerry Sandusky was doing to young children or young athletes, I right. should say, at Penn State. Right. It's the pattern of, believe it or not, um, um, Jim Jordan at, at, at OSU. Um, uh, Representative Jim Jordan who, yeah. who didn't uh, see the abuse that was going on when he was an assistant wrestling right. coach. I had never been told about it. It's a pattern, and it's the same pattern over and over and over. And then they, they expect people to believe that, especially us victims, mm -hmm. that we want you to believe uh, 
of our innocence. Well, I, I don't believe your innocence. Mm -hmm. And um, all you have to do is actually tell the truth. Mm -hmm. so you're, 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 calling, you're calling on Bishop, Bishop Thomas to tell the truth. Right. And you don't think he's done that? No, no. And that, so that's a big. That's, that's a, a big issue. That's a big. Well, it's a big issue, but it's 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 an enormous. Um, it's an enormous step to question a bishop that way. Don't, I mean, it is, isn't it? He puts his pants on in the morning the same yeah. way I put mine on. Now I talked to Mr. Keller earlier this week, and I did ask uh, Bishop Thomas in in a written inquiry about these issues that you raised. Yes. He was in Pennsylvania, he grew up in Pennsylvania in the Catholic Church, he went to seminary in the Catholic Church, he was a pastor in churches in Pennsylvania, and he was an archbishop of the Diocese of Philadelphia. And as you say, how could you not know this was going on? And the questions I asked, and I showed them yes. you the questions, were very difficult for me to ask a bishop. Oh. Uh, and so your courage in questioning a bishop's integrity on this, uh, and I understand where you're coming from because I read the letter to the faithful as well, and it is vague. And some somebody from the diocese told you, well, he didn't lie. Yeah. And, and explain that a little and, bit. And um, that he didn't come right out and deny. And I said, no, he didn't deny. He lied. Yeah. How can you? How can you? be everything that you've been for all these years and not hear something about the abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and so therefore, um, how am I to respect you? You know, in Can my workaday world, I worked out at Ford Motor Company here in Sandusky for 45 Tiffin years. Tiffin Avenue. Tiffin Avenue. And one of the things I was known for is that um, if you wanted the note of truth, you asked me, yeah. and um, and it was said a number of times. You never will lie, will you? And my reply was, you know, I'd rather be known as a poor performer than a poor performer and a liar. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, well, I, I found your story very difficult to to hear and write about. I found it difficult to write to the bishop in such a way. I, I've met the bishop on several occasions and. And he is a man of, uh, uh, he's, a, he's a charming person. Yeah, he's, he's charismatic. He's charismatic. Uh, and um, he's always taken our questions. Uh, he, in this case, these questions that I posed to him were pretty direct. Right. I asked uh, the bishop, uh, you know, which uh, I asked him if he had been the victim of abuse growing up in the Catholic Church, uh, which was a very difficult question, but it seemed like the question that needed to be asked. I, um, wow. <laughs> I, um, I, I wasn't going to bring that up. Uh huh. Uh huh. But now that you've bought it up, yeah. um, honestly, a lot of times people I have found in my life of 71 years, a lot of times people deny things because they themselves have been part of whatever they're denying. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and if that's the case, and that's the way he's handling it, um, this is the way I handle it. Right, right. And I do this, I don't do this just for me. I do this for those who aren't brave enough um, that be at peace with this. Um, there's a lot of post-traumatic stress syndrome related to um, uh, those of us who served in Vietnam, those who served and you in served Iraq, in Vietnam? yes, those who served in Iraq, those who served in Afghanistan. I'm going to tell you something. Um, most veterans are willing to talk about their post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. when it comes to those three wars. Yet, 99% of the victims of priest molestation are not willing to talk about it. And that is how severe it actually is. Do you think that a victim thinks about it every day? 
I don't think about it every day. Well, but you, you, you. But I express I do. But a victim who hasn't, a victim who has not been able to talk about it to anyone. Do you think they think about it every day? I'm inclined to say yes. Well, yeah. I'm inclined yeah. to say yes, and part of how I overcome it is um, I'm still practicing. Mm -hmm. I'm still. I am proud of that. You're going to be in church on Sunday. I'm going to be on church on Sunday with your wife Sandy. With my wife Sandy, and my peers who sit in those peers pews, they can be judgmental one way or the other. I've talked to my local priest about this. Um, I don't talk behind people's backs. So, so George, I mean, there's a difference though between you and someone who hasn't acknowledged what happened to them. Um, you've been able to talk t about it for 16 years yes. openly. And you said when, when the Boston Globe story broke, that was the opportunity. That was the opportunity. And that was the opportunity for some others. Yes. And after your story broke in the Register and the Toledo Blade. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there were other newspapers in Ohio that were picking up on the story. N certainly nothing as strong as, as the Boston Globe did. Yes. Uh, the Blade was really strong in its coverage. David, I think it's David Yonke? Yonke, yes. Uh, a strong reporter at the Toledo Blade at the time who, who had a lot of great copy about this that, that told the story of, of, of Ohio, abuse in Ohio. Um, but you have asked to meet with the, so, so you, you've got two, two uh, requests of the bishop. You know, one request is that he resign. Yes. And one request is that he uh, meet with you. Yes. Why would he meet with you if you want him to quit his job? Um, I think he needs to, uh, he needs to meet with real victims. Right. When I met with Bishop Hoffman, back in 2002. Um, the lawyers for the church wanted him to meet me. And uh, my wife was sitting there, and um, although she knew of the abuse, she knew why we were setting up at the church offices, she had never heard the gory details. And, and Bishop Hoffman said, Mrs. Keller, are you okay? And I had to explain to him that this was the first time she had actually heard the gory details. He was shaken. He was shaken. He said, you're the first victim I've ever met. This can be disputed or not. It's said that Bishop Hoffman died of cancer. He and I had a couple of conversations on the telephone after our meeting. After 2002. And Bishop Hoffman, the diagnosis might have been cancer, but he died of a broken heart. For all those years, he had been told to toe the line. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, I know from my workaday world as a supervisor that you sometimes walked gingerly because after all, you were after that pay raise or that promotion. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you angered or you did something, you weren't going to get that. Well, put yourself in the shoes of your everyday priest who's trying to be promoted to one of the few bishops mm -hmm. or that bishop who's working very hard to be promoted to cardinal. to cardinal and that cardinal who's getting who's trying to be promoted to whatever is after that mm -hmm. and for because them, of their love for the church right and for them to speak out about the unspeakable automatically ruins your future and so the secret continues mm -hmm. because we have put our promotion over our church we that's what we our done. responsibility our res our responsibilities um, and and there are times when no matter what 
um, in my life something just insignificant. Oh, I found my car keys. Thank you, Jesus. And there are people who will listen to that. Well, what did you just say? I said, thank you, Jesus. I mean, somebody had to find them because I couldn't. I looked for them for hours. Thank you, Jesus. They're in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or my glasses that are on my head. You know, it was a snake. It would have been. Um, but that's who I am today. And, and you um, live a good life. Oh, I, I, I make. You know, and and because of my wife, we've been married for 51 years. Mm -hmm. My goodness, what we have went through. Um, I used to be sort of the doctor, Phil at work, um, because I had to. You're, you're going through this divorce, or your kids do this, or your wife does that, or, or, or your husband. My job was to keep you coming to work mm -hmm. because you're going to lose this, and you're going to lose that, and you're going to lose it. Don't lose this job, mm -hmm. and don't lose yourself. Mm -hmm. George has never lost himself. Mm -hmm. Sandy's held him together. Mm -hmm. His kids have held him together, and I try to do that. It's my debt. And the church has sustained you. Right. And, and you know, um, when here a while back we were invited to be Eucharistic ministers. Me? You? Me? <laughs> and I didn't realize how, I mean, it is, it's, I, it's the grandest thing that ever has happened in my life. To, to, as a Catholic from back in the 50s, when, my goodness, you didn't look sideways. Well, you, you, there were no Eucharistic ministers. No. Only the, only the priest could hold yeah. the host. To be able to the, do the, that the body today, of Christ. You know, to be able to tell someone you're receiving the blood of Christ or you're receiving the body of Christ, to be able to, to have that honor. And then at the same time, to, to have to listen to this bishop say that he was shocked, shocked and angered. I'm shocked and angered. Can, can Bishop Thomas tell the truth? Can he, can he, can it's he never fix too, it? It's, there are times when I've had to tell my wife the truth. There are times at work um, that I had to tell the truth. and. Um, Sometimes I wouldn't volunteer it, but if you ask me, I wasn't going to. Is that is that what you want to get from the bishop when you when you meet with him? If, if well, he, I you're, you, you're you're convinced you're going to meet with him. I hope so. Uh -huh. And it's not for me. It's not for me that I want the truth. I want the truth for the whole diocese of Toledo. For the institution. For the institution, <laughs> the whole diocese of Toledo. I mean, honestly. That letter, and, and, and at the end of that letter, again, pray and fast. Pray and fast and it'll go away. Mm -hmm. That's what you told me in 2002. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So you want years. more from the bishop? I right? want more from the bishop. Yeah. I want more from the church. You, are you adamant that he should resign? All he has to do is tell the truth. And that's hard to do once you've told a lie. Mm -hmm. But that's what I always prided myself with. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're told that by your boss and your boss's boss, that mm -hmm. you never will tell a lie, will you? No, no, no I, I, I couldn't live with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live with that. And, and, and my people, mm -hmm. my people at Ford were my family. When you walked into my area, you were home, mm -hmm. and you you uh, experienced a, a lot of um, uh, people who told you of their abuse after they oh. knew who you were. Uh, just the, the the men, manly men, not that as 145 pounds in the day, um, <laughs> day. but I'm talking about manly men uh -huh. that came up to me in tears and told me their stories. Is it and, important that people who were abused tell their story? Um, or is it individual? That some of, it's individual. Some of it, I'm telling you, Matt, I'm telling you, there is such a shame associated with it mm -hmm. that 
it, it just unbelievable. Like I said, veterans will talk about their 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 their, but very few victims. Um, just the other day, a man who I've known forever and ever and ever and ever tells me of his abuse by the same priest. In the same in a, manner. In the same manner. And it was just like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for him to finally, after all these years, after all the camaraderie of um, this and that and this, of after all a the lifetime. camaraderie, and, and we got on the subject because of the, and I think he, he fished me into it. You know, how about that report on Pennsylvania? Well, that was it, you know. And, um, and so then we were able to talk about it. Well, let me, uh, we have to finish up, but I want to ask you a few more questions. There's been a call from, a, 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 a call from many corners of this nation uh, and from many Catholics to the Pope that all U.S. bishops should, should resign at this point. Do you support all bishops resigning? I, I don't know what the church would do if all, if everyone who knew or didn't know or didn't report, what would happen to the institution? Right. There'd be nothing right. left. But, you know, in going mea copa, mea copa, mea maxima copa, right. um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, that's what's got to happen. Mm -hmm. That's that's what's got to happen. And it has to happen from the Vatican? It, the Vatican, it has to happen on down to the the, 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 priest. the, the very, the, the ground pounding priest mm -hmm. from everybody. And We're the, sorry. And the seminary. We're sorry. And for those of you who have fallen away, Come back and help make us stronger. You know why I don't run away? You know why I never ran away from the church? Because I want to stay and make the church stronger. If, if it's just one man, one person, you want to be one person, faith. I want to be there fighting to make that church stronger. And for you who have fallen away, um, you took the easy way out. Mm -hmm. Did Christ take the easy way out? Or did he hang on the cross? Mm -hmm. And what did Christ do on a cross? What were some of his last words? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Now, if Christ can do that hanging on the cross, mm -hmm. dying, the bishop can acknowledge. The bishop can acknowledge the, the truth. Pope. And the Pope can acknowledge the truth. And George Keller can be forgiving. And you want to be forgiven. I, I want to forgive them. I want to forgive them. And, and you have forgiven. And I have forgiven. I mean, but you know, it. I'll tell you something. I just, the other day, I got my VFW magazine. My father was a World War II veteran, and he would never watch World War II movies. Really? And I wouldn't understand why. Mm -hmm. well, well, Dan, why don't you want to watch World War II movies? John Wayne. Well, he was a veteran. He didn't want it. He, he, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. I don't watch Vietnam movies. Mm -hmm. When I pick up my VFW magazine, it's one story after another. And you wonder why post-traumatic stress continues. Mm -hmm. It had went away in my life for 16 years. It went away. Since 2002? Since 2002. And all of a sudden, I'm smacked up alongside the head with it again. And you were you were less surprised by the massiveness of what happened in Pennsylvania than by the bishop's denial. Uh, the bishop's denial is that was just the the insult of insults. And it's just oh, a, a couple of respect. Yeah. And the Pope has been accused of knowing about uh, Cardinal McCarran's abuses yep. and doing nothing. And doing nothing. Should the Pope resign? They've asked for him to resign. They've asked for him to resign. There have been times in my life, and I don't want to embarrass my wife. There have been times in my life when I have had 
to ask my wife for her forgiveness. Mm -hmm. She's given it to me. That's a hard one. Yeah. Sometimes that's a hard one. Yeah. That's all that. And then you've got to mean it. Mm -hmm. You've got to mean it. And that's what you want from the bishop. And that's what I want from the bishop, and the cardinals, the pope. That I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Right. I'm sorry. You know, Christ was very forgiving, even as he hung on the cross. But there's one time when Christ stepped out of character, as far as I'm concerned. Temple. And it was when he said, Anyone who hurts one of my little ones should have a millstone tied around their neck and thrown into the depths of the sea. That is the only time that I can remember Jesus Christ, Lord, God, whoever you want to call him. That's the only time. And he never apologized for that. Mm -hmm. He never went back and said, oh, I didn't mean that. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean that. No. It doesn't sound like Jesus. It doesn't sound like Jesus. I mean, when you're hanging on the cross and you're asking your, your, your father, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's a place in the Bible that says, tie a millstone around their necks and throw them into the sea, the depths of the sea. Mm -hmm. Totally unforgiving. Totally unforgiving on one issue. You know, he tossed the money changers out. I'm not a big biblical scholar. Mm -hmm. Tossed the money chambers, changers out. Did this, did that. But um, tie a millstone around your neck. Mm -hmm. I don't want a millstone around my neck. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want it around my bishop. I don't want it around my uh, a cardinal. I don't want it around the pope's neck. I don't want to be them. When I stand there on the last day and I'm being judged, all them scoundrelly things I did, mm -hmm. I hope will be outweighed by more good. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, we will be touching base with you in the weeks ahead, uh, and we will seek uh, more answers from the bishop, Bishop Daniel Thomas. Um, and so we'll be in touch with you as the weeks uh, ahead. Well, I, I just, weeks ahead. you, I, I know you've interviewed a lot of people. You've done a lot of stories. Your paper is just groundbreaking. I just want to tell you, I, words cannot, my appreciation right now mm. for you doing this story, um, is just, I don't know how to explain it. And I hope that, that the people that in 2002 didn't understand what I was saying and still wanted to deny it, I hope that 16 years later that they now understand. Okay. Well, we'll be in touch with you. We'll follow up on this. And I, I so appreciate you stopping by the Register Newsroom and being on Between the Lines. George, it's nice to meet you and talk it's, with you. And I, you'll be in church on Sunday. Yes. And George's story is in Sandusky Register tomorrow, a follow-up story to some of the stories we've been doing since the grand jury report. This has been Between the Lines Live at SandusskyRegister.com.